Hello and welcome to the Rockwall Canyon Railroad. Today we have an exciting episode about automated commuter trains. We'll show you how it works and what components you need to do it yourself. First, let's take a look at what I do on my own railroad. I really like the Bud RDC rail cars. They're great for commuter trains because they have headlights and marker lights and everything looks modern and sleek. Bud rail diesel cars were also used with locomotives occasionally too, especially towards the end of their life. Now let's take a look at some operations. Here comes a train coming out of the station with a standard consist, while a train of Bud RDC cars pulled by a locomotive waits in the station for its turn to depart. Just because we have a few automated trains running around the layout doesn't mean that we can't get on there with a radio control powered freight train and try to fit in between. It can be kind of fun to try to work a freight train into all the, the excitement going on and try to avoid having any collisions. All right, well, let's talk about how we do the automated trains. The locomotives have batteries on board, either in the locomotive or in the trailing car. There's also a radio control receiver and a pair of reed switches on the bottom of the engine. The reed switches pass over a magnet on the track, which tells the radio control system to make a station stop. The train slows down and makes a stop for a certain amount of time that can be programmed. And then the train slowly ramps back up to speed. This rail diesel car is actually a power car and it contains a battery and radio remote control system. It has no motors and must be pulled by either another RDC car or a locomotive. Here's the Railboss 4 controller. This image shows the appropriate connectors to connect to a locomotive or another RDC car for lighting and power. We are also fans of Thomas the Tank Engine and have him playing along as well. 
Here is a smaller version of the board that requires only the use of a magnet. It has no radio control system whatsoever. It just uses the magnets to run the train around the layout and also makes station stops. Same thing with Emily. She also makes station stops just like the commuter trains. So much fun. Here's a picture showing the uh, reed switch. You can see that little black thing coming down behind the rear buffer. Uh, here's another picture with the battery just taped in, unfortunately, and the control. Smallbrook Studios makes a nice kit to convert Emily into a more prototypical engine. One of the advantages to using the Bud Rail diesel car as a power car is you can switch to whatever engine you like. This saves a lot of money, as I no longer have to have batteries and radio control systems in every single engine that I own, and allows me to have a little more variety. Here we see the RDCs being pulled by a Boston and Maine RS3, while Emily arrives at the station here at Pont Rocheau. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. If you have questions, put them in the comment box below. And let's close with Emily floating along down the track. Bye everyone.